Amiral. Bonjour. Voilà. Welcome to Headquarter Miribel in Vermont. Merci. Euh. Alors, j'ai une question. Pouvez-vous nous dire les uniformes des soldats américains de 1917 à 1918 euh, D'accord. Euh, bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Euh, I'm Michał Kowalski from Polish uh, Reenactment Group, AAF. We are doing uh, right now uh, reenactment of American soldiers from the First World War. Uh, this uniform that my friends are wearing are showing how American soldiers who fought in France may look like. Here is a sergeant from the infantry. He is armed only with the pistol. He has got on his belt. Uh, pouches for magazines and a trench knife. A trench knife which will be very useful in the fightings, uh, close fightings in the uh, trenches of the First World War. He's got on his chest a gas mask. He's got also a full backpack. A backpack with a, a trenching shawl with some uh, essential stuff like a jerkin. It's a vest, a very warm vest and uh, a blanket inside of his uh, backpack. He's got also a canteen and a first aid pouch with a bagnet, a bayonet on his left part of backpack. Another friend of mine is also a sergeant from the American uh, infantry. He's armed not only with a pistol, but also with a rifle, an American Springfield M9. 1903 rifle. He's got another type of belt where he is keeping his ammunition. Mm. And he's got also his gas mask inside his gas mask back. At the head, he is wearing a steel helmet, an American model of British helmet, and he's got also a similar backpack with an axe this time, and other necessary equipment, and a knife, a special knife, a bolo knife, which was used first by the medics, but then also by the other troops like machine guns, troops, and sometimes an infantry. Here we have a military police personnel, a guy who was working for the security and uh, was helping to manage all the uh, troops to get into the fields and uh, make some, everything working out. He's wearing a, a little bit different uniform, a straight later war uh, pants. He got it from the British uh, uh, counterparts as well as uh, his MP armband. He's got also a revolver M 1917 and on his head he has a famous uh, campaign hat, an American hat with which the Americans came to France and then changed it into the steel helmets. Euh, Mirel, donc dans l'intervention des soldats américains, euh, connaissez-vous le nombre de régiments qui ont combattu lors de la grande offensive Meuse-Argonne en septembre 18 uh, I can say you that uh, Americans, uh, generally speaking, at May 1918, uh, introduced uh, for the first time in their history and the Battle of Cantigny as a whole division. Then they moved to Saint-Miel offensive at September 1918 and they were operating as an entire corps. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mesargon was the first time in the US history that they were operating overseas with the entire army. They moved more than 8,100 personnel uh, to this region and uh, along with 100,000 French, they moved to this very, very hard terrain to fight uh, in the area at Montfalcon, Romagne, chateau Chéchery and other uh, different uh, villages. I can tell that um, I don't remember the exact number of the American divisions and regiments that participated when there were such a distinguished division like 77th Division, uh, 82nd Division, 1st US Division uh, and others. And uh, generally uh, losses were terrible for the Americans and if I recall well 
this was the bloodiest battle in US history which took place uh, in the Mazargon area. Concernant donc euh, votre intervention, euh, pouvez-vous me dire euh, si les soldats noirs américains avaient le droit de combattre avec les soldats blancs américains euh, du racisme probablement. Uh, states, uh, the US army were strictly segregated as well as uh, the US navy, the US uh, marine corps and the situation the situation was like that that Uh, white divisions uh, were under the uh, IAF and General Pershing Command and the Americans sent some separate divisions which were made entirely for, as an uh, enlistment personnel from the black Americans. And they were sent to the French authorities and the French army uh, was free to use of them. And they were fighting separately and uh, one of the regiments were most mm -hmm. decorated, uh, as if I recall well, mm -hmm. uh, regiments in the uh, American army during the uh, First World War and it distinguished uh, its service and the French uh, honored them much for the sacrifice mm -hmm. that they fight uh, for them, among them and there wasn't any other issues with that question. Concernant donc euh, les autorités donc militaires, le général Pershing, qui a, qui a combattu, qui est votre grand chef finalement, euh, savez-vous qu'il avait son quartier général à, au village de Souilly, pas loin d'ici uh, Americans uh, have an impression that they might uh, create a large armies, uh, many millions of soldiers with tanks, with uh, support of the airplanes and they will be ready for 1919. When the 1919 will come, they will push through the Germans and they will end this war. They didn't want to send uh, the American units as a reinforcements to other uh, allies, to French or British, because they thought that it might end, uh, uh, they might end as a meat for the mm -hmm. other armies in blood, bloody battles. They thought that they'd have their own uh, way to win this war. But situation changed when the Paris uh, and the Germans were threatening the Paris. Uh, but, uh, I think that uh, General Pershing came to realization that the situation uh, is such bad that he need to move uh, mm. the Americans finally to the fields. Mm. And they participated uh, in the many parts of France, not only on the southern part, but also some divisions fought alongside the British on the north. D'accord. Euh, concernant euh, d'autres euh, personnalités qui deviendront des personnalités, on peut citer donc, le lieutenant Patton, commandant donc euh, euh, une compagnie de chars Renault qui, est, qui a traversé vos coins d'ailleurs. Mmh. On peut citer donc euh, le futur président de la République Harry Truman qui a combattu aussi dans une division américaine. On peut citer plein d'autres euh, autorités euh, américaines qui, ou futures autorités américaines qui ont combattu dans les rangs donc, euh, des, états, des soldats, euh, donc des différentes euh, divisions euh, de soldats américains. Euh, concernant euh, votre arrivée en France en 1917, dès le la déclaration de la guerre, de la guerre donc le 6 avril 1917. Vous êtes arrivé dans plusieurs ports, donc on peut citer euh, Bordeaux, euh, on peut citer donc euh, Cherbourg, Brest, et il me semble Le Havre également. Hein. Euh, alors, est-ce que euh, lorsque vous êtes arrivé en France, c'était pour vous donc une terre complètement inconnue vous avez sans doute trouvé drôle la vie euh, des Français un peu particulière. I must say that uh, Americans, uh, maybe let's say that France have a good press at the States. People uh, have a tendency to have a romantic view of France, that La Belle France uh, is a place when they want to, uh, and, and there is a cause for the Americans to fight for. The Lafayette was uh, supporting the American uh, nation when they are fighting for the independence. They feel that uh, the American might have helped France fighting with this, let's say, bad guys, bad uh, size. But uh, many Americans uh, uh, changed a little bit this uh, romantic view when they fought the horrors of war. They saw the trenches, they saw the mud everywhere, they saw uh, uh, poor people who don't have uh, enough food, who don't have enough uh, money. Uh, and um, 
they thought that this was a good cause and this was a good uh, war in which they had participated. And also uh, it may be visible uh, about by this what was left uh, for the, by the Americans. There are still monuments, there are still cemeteries, there's, uh, there's still, uh, I thought, a lot of uh, French and Americans uh, who want to keep the memory about what happened at France and how Americans get involved in the, this war, another one, unfortunately, uh, more than 20 years uh, later. Lorsque vous êtes arrivé, donc dès 1917, sachez que le département de la Meuse, notre petit département, qui avait donc un tiers occupé par les Allemands dans le nord, le restant, finalement, a accueilli 200 000 de vos compagnons hein, pour être entraînés par les troupes françaises pendant pratiquement une année sur le sol de la Meuse dont vous êtes ici partie prenante. Alors, je vous remercie pour tous les éléments que vous avez bien voulu nous donner. Et puis, je vous dis euh, donc un bon succès pour ces jours de reconstitution. Et ma foi, mon cœur est avec vous. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Au revoir.